What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Fudge Muppet. It's Michael here bringing you an awesome looking build, a character that has been highly requested for a very long time. As the title says, this build is the Bounty Hunter, but before we get into the backstory, I do have a super important update, so if you're a fan of these Skyrim builds, you'll want to listen closely. In a nutshell, we're changing the upload schedule and format of these Skyrim builds to make them A, higher quality, B, even funner to make, and C, more likely to reach new Skyrim fans on YouTube. The redone Skyrim builds we have coming will still be uploaded randomly whenever we can, but for the regular Skyrim builds, they're going to be coming once every two weeks. Now, they will, however, be closer to 20 minutes in length, be extremely detailed, and go through all the perks we're using at each level, the gear we're using in different stages of the game, etc. Basically, they're going to be formatted more like our Fallout 4 builds, and they'll be based on the best way to play traditional classes within Elder Scrolls. So basically, you'll have the best Battle Mage build, and then two weeks later, the best Nightblade build, and these videos, as I said, are going to be much better than the current builds. They'll still have all the role-playing elements they currently have, but they'll also talk a lot about statistics, factions, and progression. So get excited, and if you see anyone in the comments asking what's going on in a few weeks, be sure to let them know. Now let's get into the backstory. Born in Hammerfell, the bounty hunter grew up with his uncle and never knew what happened to his parents. His uncle refused to tell him, so he assumed it was best he didn't know. It was most likely something awful. The uncle had decided to stay in Hammerfell with the bounty hunter after much travel throughout Tamriel, and the bounty hunter could only just remember a time when he was alone himself, just him and his parents. The uncle was once a magician who used illusion magic to perform tricks in Morrowind and had taught the bounty hunter some spells living together in Hammerfell. The bounty hunter enjoyed using magic, but they didn't practice it openly as it was frowned upon by the locals. The bounty hunter didn't have the best life, although his uncle was always good to him. They were fairly poor and the uncle struggled to make ends meet. As the bounty hunter grew into a man and things became harder and harder for the two Dunmar, the uncle ended up finding himself in the wrong crowd. He began throwing his money into underground gambling clubs, taking risks to cash in on the money of participating criminals. He did, however, have a secret advantage. He would use illusion magic to sway the games they would play to his favor, and it wasn't long before he was regularly taking home large sums of gold. Eventually, though, the uncle was caught, and like a pack of enraged dogs finally let out of a cage, the criminals tore him apart. A man who knew the uncle but obviously wasn't overly close with him was there at the time, and he took it upon himself to inform the bounty hunter. The bounty hunter was devastated, but more than this, he was furious. He had nothing left in his life to care about, and with little to no hesitation, he sought out the criminals at one of the underground gambling locations and killed them all. He killed the final few with an old sword from his home, but to begin with, he used illusion to make two criminals kill each other in a flurry of vicious dagger lunges. The man who told the bounty hunter about what the criminals did to his uncle had a plan of his own, and followed the bounty hunter to the criminal's hangout. Looking at the bounty hunter and the corpses, he told him that the criminals had a bounty on their heads, and that they should collect it together. The bounty hunter, still shaking and confused, agreed. He wouldn't have known about this unless the man had told him, and he definitely needed some coin. To his surprise, the bounty hunter was paid incredibly well, and thought that perhaps being a bounty hunter would be a good way to spend his life. He'd be able to get rid of criminals, make a living, and if he died in the process, he wouldn't care because he had lost hope in his life anyway. Eventually, after being a bounty hunter in Hammerfell for a while, the memories of his uncle still bothered him greatly, and he decided that he wanted a fresh start. He would head to Skyrim, a land that was nothing like Hammerfell, where there was also plenty of work. As we know, the bounty hunter is captured on the border and carted to Helgen, where he later escapes. The bounty hunter will be wearing scaled boots, scaled gauntlets, and scaled horn armor. We thought this armor looked ridiculously cool for a bounty hunter when you couple it with the Temple Priest hood for a Dark Elf character, which we will be using, and it just looks absolutely sensational. To get the Temple Priest hood, you will have to kill one in the temple in Ravenrock, and you're gonna have to roleplay that he had done something malicious and had a bounty on his head. Scaled armor can be found commonly around Skyrim, and I know for sure that scaled horn armor will appear once you reach around level 19 or 20. Until this, you can wear whatever light armor you like, but we think armors similar to scaled would look best. So that's the armor, but what about the weapons and the spells? Well, the bounty hunter is going to be using spells to summon his weapon and also to calm people down. 
He'll be using pacify spells in his left hand and a bounce sword in his right, which he will of course have to summon using conjuration magic. He's the kind of bounty hunter that can appear unsuspicious as he walks into places unarmed with no weapons to be seen. People don't expect a blade to be conjured out of thin air. He can also use all the other illusion spells such as Frenzy, and at later levels when you're using expert spells you'll want to dual wield these to get the best effect. In terms of skills, the bounty hunter will be using light armor to keep himself undamaged and get the best protection out of what he wears, conjuration to summon his bound sword and nothing else which means there won't be much perk investment in this, illusion to manipulate the battlefield, calm bounty targets down and frenzy nearby enemies, and one handed to masterfully use his sword. To some people's surprise, the bounty hunter will also be using lockpicking. He needs to be able to open any door that separates himself from his target, and he also enjoys collecting valuable loot on his adventures which he can later sell. There's nothing like collecting extra value on top of the bounty reward. As always, the perk link will be in the description so you know exactly what perks you will need. When we do the high quality best build series, these perks will be explained in detail. Looking at the playstyle of the Bounty Hunter, he's going to be running up to his targets, casting Pacify and slashing apart the most dangerous enemies first. This allows him to prevent enemies from getting a tactical advantage over him. For example, if he was fighting a group of bandits, he might want to pacify the archers so he can focus on the melee fighters first and take out the pesky bowmen after. He'll also be taking on as many bounties as he can to make the lands a better place, but most importantly to make a living. In terms of a stat spread, the Bounty Hunter is going to want 60% health and 40% magicka. Investing more than half your stat allocation into health will ensure you stay alive, especially considering that your armor isn't that powerful, and having 40% magicka will of course allow you to constantly cast your illusion spells. We're not investing anything into stamina as we find it unnecessary for this build. When choosing a standing stone, we're going to be going with the Lord Stone to have a 25% resistance to magic and also 50 more points of armor rating, which is a very nice boost for this character. When it comes to storyline and faction choices, the Bounty Hunter will simply pick whatever he thinks can get him the most amount of money with the least amount of effort. And that wraps up this week's Skyrim build, The Bounty Hunter. Thank you so much for watching and please do click the subscribe button below if you love Skyrim and can't wait to see more. Like the video if you've been waiting to see a Bounty Hunter build, and definitely follow us on social media. We've both got Twitter now and Snapchat, so be sure to swing by and say hi. My name is Michael, this was the Bounty Hunter, and I'll see you all in a fortnight with an ultimate new build. Until then, have an awesome week.